In the news tonight, emergency operations centres activated. Prince of Wales could head here. And the real estate uproar continues. From the studios of FBC Suva, Amrita Sagar. Emergency operation centres have been activated across the country with a possible tropical cyclone expected within the next 24 hours. This is the current tropical disturbance 04F is expected to be upgraded tonight into a depression before further intensifying into a cyclone system by Friday. Director for the National Disaster Management Office, Vasiti Soko, is urging Fijians to be prepared and to ensure they adhere to all of the advisories issued by the relevant stakeholders. Maggie Boyle reports. With recovery operations from TC Sarai still ongoing, the emergency service now breaks in for possibly yet another cyclone. The National Emergency Operations Center has been activated on a 24-hour shift. There will be officers available or working on an eight-hour shift to ensure that information that we receive from the ground is um, circulated. And the NDMO has taken a more inclusive approach this time around, ensuring no Fijian is left behind. For the first time, we acknowledge the disability community who've uh, also activated their emergency operations center uh, based in Grand Street that has been activated as well today. For the Fiji Met services, the current system is expected to intensify into a possibly Category 2 cyclone. Given that it's uh, tracking towards, uh, expected to track over Vano Levu on, on Friday with uh, members of the public, especially those who are living along uh, Vano Levu and also on the maritime islands of uh, the Lau and Lomo Viti group, should be expecting uh, the, uh, the rain and also the strong winds that is associated with the system to be uh, approaching or to be over them. The NDMO director stressing that Fijians need to prepare now. In particular, they need to adhere to the advisories, stay away from flooded waterways and stay indoors at the height of the cyclone. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Meanwhile, the Northern Emergency Operations Centre is on standby and ready to activate as and when the need arises. All government ministries and departments are pooling their personnel and resources as the North stands to, to be directly hit by the cyclone on Friday. Eleanor Trangaeview reports. As rain starts to hit Lombasa, the whole of Vanolevu has been put on notice to prepare themselves now for what is to come on Friday. It's anticipated that... Uh the cyclone when it will run through Wadolem, uh, uh, maybe in between uh, Shanganga and Lakutu, uh, right down to Shabu uh, Shabu. District EOCs are also on standby, with 195 evacuation centers identified for the whole of the Northern Division 38 in Boa, 49 in Madhuata, and 108 in the Kaunrobe. Uh, most of our evacuation centers are, uh, are schools. So we've just heard this afternoon that uh, the schools are ready. Uh, and uh, if the need arises, uh, we can uh, get our people into those uh, schools. According to the Acting Commissioner Northern, should TC Tino continue in its current path, schools in the Northern Division can be expected to be closed on Friday. Though uh, uh, we see the, uh, the forecasted track that uh, it will run through one side of Avono Levu, but the whole of Avono Levu uh, is being warned and uh, everybody should prepare. All government machinery in the Northern Division have also been put on notice and personnel and resources are being put together to assist the Northern Emergency <coughs> Operations Centre. Eleanor Turangaiviu, FBC News. The Prince of Wales has been invited to be chief guest during Fiji's 50th Independence Day celebration. Speaking to the Fijian diaspora in the United Arab Emirates last night, Prime Minister Varangabani Marama confirmed Prince Charles has been formally approached to take part in Fiji Day. 
Penny Marama says it would be fitting for Prince Charles to attend since he handed Fiji the instruments of independence on October 10, 1970. I've come out to invite uh, uh, His Royal Highness Prince Charles uh, to come and be our chief guest. As you know, he was the one that uh, gave us our constitution back in 1970. Uh, some may have not been born then. But it's a wonderful opportunity if he agrees for him to come back and be our, our chief guest again for uh, our 50th anniversary. It has become really difficult for the Real Estate Agents Licensing Board to stop the illegal activities that has tainted the industry. Some agents have been found putting properties on listings without the consent of the owners. The Real Estate Agents Licensing Board says last year they had received several complaints. However, the issues are recurring. Kritika Kumar reports. The RLB is working to eradicate agents from operating illegally by continuing their ground inspection and surveillance. This is an area where we are looking into how we can uh, uh, track down on, on, on agents who are doing such a, uh, practicing such a, in the real estate sector. But definitely they cannot do that. They must get the consent from the owners. The real BCS says they are dealing with the dishonest agents in three different stages. One is to is to give them a warning in the first instance. If that uh, does not improve the situation, then next would we will suspend the agent, and of course the last uh, and the final action would be to terminate their license. Another issue faced by the real B is the behaviour of some of the real estate agents. Compliance and monitoring officer Vinal Singh says. Last year, they had received several complaints regarding inappropriate behavior of some agents. As uh, the matter will come to light and we have evidence that our salesperson and agents are doing this, definitely the board will take serious actions. The real B is urging property owners to remain vigilant and has reminded Fijians to beware of bogus agents. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The Republic of Fiji military forces has confirmed that 54 of its personnel are preparing for deployment to Australia to provide assistance in light of the country's bushfire crisis. According to the RFMF Chief of Staff, Captain John Fox, this number could decrease based on the type of assistance needed by the Australian Defence Force. Lena Rees has more. The RFMF continued their discussion with the Australian Defence Force to determine the areas of focus where troops will be able to assist. So we're not actually going there to fight fires. We're actually more involved in the rehabilitation work. So places where the bushfire has gone through, like the clearing of woods, uh, clearing of debris, um, mostly that kind of work. RFMF Chief of Staff also clarified that despite some saying the assistance by the country is delayed, he stressed that their main priority for any disaster relief assistance will first be within our own country. For us, uh, the priority is Fiji. So the RFMF, any disaster really with Fiji. So, um, I mean, I know there's words of people that that have been going around the, of our what? Of our lateness, of our response, but we've just faced a cyclone that has gone past, that we've been uh, be, been deployed, we've been assisting in that, and we are facing another one. So our priority is that. Uh, from here, we will first go to a military base uh, close to Melbourne City, uh, Pagpanya. And then from there they will deploy uh, after an initial training period of n uh, not more than three days. Hundreds of bushfires have burnt across Australia, killing at least 28 people and destroying more than 2,000 homes. And as of this afternoon, Australian firefighters are urging their Prime Minister Scott Morrison not to call a royal commission into the unprecedented fires that are ravaging their country. Lena Rees, FBC News. Up ahead, board reveals loan and scholarship figures. And discipline starts at home, says Minister. Details after the break. Hi, Bula. I'm Selai from Nandi. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, my name is uh, Sotiana here in Bar. We love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Hi, my name is Fiona from Tavua and I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, I'm Ini from Rakiraki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits.
The Tertiary Scholarship Loans Board spends around $180 million on scholarships and loans annually. This has increased from the initial $60 million it spent when the scheme started in 2014 because there were only one batch of students. Currently, on average, around 6,000 new students apply for TELS alone per annum. Ritika Pratap reports. Each year, the Tertiary Scholarship Loans Board provides scholarships and loans to around 8,000 students between January and February. Uh, of this, uh, of course, 950 are taken on board by the National Topper Scholarship, which means the remaining uh, 7,000 to 7,300 students would benefit uh, from TELS uh, uh, schemes annually. Remember, these are the new students. Uh, collectively, if you look at from 2014 till now, we have funded close to 39,000 students. Uh, so that is a huge number, and TELS number would definitely be above 30,000. Maharaj says over the years, students have understood the TSLB policies and conditions. They also are able to uh, get uh, information about the program, etc., from the universities directly, and they're enrolling for the correct program. So, overall, a uh, success rate for all the Fijian government scholarship schemes and the loan schemes from 2014 till now has been quite good. Education Minister Rosie Akbar is urging students to be honest when applying for scholarships. I think uh, what I've heard from the, the, the Mr. Maharaj, the CEO of TELS, yes, there are cases that are being identified. And uh, I've also been told that many students end up losing the, the, the scholarship should they be found to be abused. Because I'm sure there are, there are a lot of deserving students out there who miss out on this. The TSLB has recorded a good completion rate since its inception in 2014. The initiative rolled out in the 2017-2018 national budget, whereby students can switch program within the first year of their studies, has greatly benefited them. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. The Education Ministry is calling on parents to take more responsibility in ensuring their children adhere to discipline. Minister Rosie Akbar says despite a decline in disciplinary issues in schools last year, the matter still remains a challenge for teachers. Kelly Vadala reports. With a zero tolerance for corporal punishment policy in place, the Education Ministry says parents play a major role when it comes to discipline. Personally, I believe that parents also need to step up their, their roles as being responsible parents in ensuring that discipline starts within their homes. Um, again, as a teacher, I also experienced that there's too much expectations uh, of teachers from the, from the community and parents. Fijians have welcomed the statement by the education minister saying parents should not entirely depend on teachers. It begins from the home, not from the school. So I'll, I will say the parents' responsibility is more than the teachers. I think the parents, uh, they have to step up and uh, yeah, look after the children because that's their responsibility at yeah, the end of the day. This is the duty of the parents. Eh? What you teach from home, they will learn. No? It is my wish to get on board um, some of our retirees, um, head teachers and heads of schools and teachers who have been known to make a difference in the institutions and in the education sector. So we are still in a process and we will be identifying and uh, using them as roving mentors. Corporal punishment is a violation of the right of a child. It prevents children from reaching their full potential. Therefore, the Education Ministry will this year focus on closely monitoring the quality of service delivery in all schools. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. The Methodist Church of Fiji is optimistic that the selection of a new Lelene Memorial School principal will be done in a transparent manner through the open merit recruitment process. Church's president, Reverend Dr. Epineri Vakandewan Vosa says they are expecting a justification from the Education Ministry soon as to why the vice principal was not given a chance to act in the principal's position. The Education Ministry maintaining appointments are based on merit. Josea Nanunga reports. With just a few days into the new school year, the attainment of leadership positions in schools under the Methodist Church banner has been grabbing attention. To be very clear, the church is not against merit system. But uh, we are strongly in disagreement with how the ministry had failed to consult the church with regards to appointment, appointment of uh, the Lilin acting principal. However, the church has high hopes that they will soon reach a consensus on this issue. Yes, we have written a, a letter to the Ministry of Education stating uh, this. 
and uh, we, we are expecting for a reply very soon. And uh, once the reply comes, then we'll see what to what to take uh, now, what to step to take next. The Education Ministry maintains its stance on the selection of school heads based on the OMRS system. I don't see any issue with the appointments of uh, uh, of principals in our schools because they are based on uh, based on merit, and of course they go through uh, the open merit recruitment process where we try to choose the the best person to lead any institution. The Education Ministry can make school head appointments based on the open merit recruitment system as the state has already received a stay order on a court ruling handed in the case between the ministry, Watuwonu SDA College, and five trustees of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Fiji. This will remain until an appeal is heard. Chosaya Nunga, FBC News. A man has been told by the civil magistrate's court to produce a medical certificate after claiming that he was allegedly assaulted by police while in custody over the weekend. Semi Wangabonomono appeared in court today, represented by legal aid. He was taken into custody after Rewanga police searched him and allegedly found marijuana in his possession. He is charged with one count of unlawful possession of illicit drugs. Wangabonomono's lawyer informed the court his client was beaten by three officers from Rewanga using electric wires while he was transported to Samambula police station where he spent the night on Sunday. In response, the judge ordered the medical examination. Wangabonobono was granted bail and will reappear in court on the 12th of March. And now it's business time with Koroi. Thanks, Amrita. Coming up after the break. International flights back at Nausori Airport. And in growing Fiji, critical bridges identified by FRA. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Shamiza. And I'm Salma. We're from Nandi and we love Michi FM because it's fun. My name is Rajni Talata and I'm from Vatulaloba. Our home sapta Mirchi FM Sunta hai because it's hot. Hi, my name is Vinita. I'm from Lambasa. I love li listening to Mirchi FM. It's number one. Ama nam sagar ready hai. Am log school me, am log gar me, aur kai bhi rehta am log kali Mirchi FM sunta. Gold town tawa me Mirchi FM dago mama. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Leading business Fiji Airways has confirmed the resumption of limited international flights from Nausori Airport since last month. Flights to and from Suva operate on Sunday at present and will operate on Sunday and Monday from next month. Fiji Airways says it will only be able to resume its normal international flight schedules from Suva once all required runway work is completed and the runway is cleared for full operations by Fiji Airports Limited. The airport project worth $60 million includes the expansion of airport facilities and construction of a bigger runway with a new terminal. Gary is now here with the latest from Wednesday Money Markets. The safe haven yen held firm today as traders awaited the signing of the U.S.-China Phase 1 trade deal. However, hopes were dented when the U.S. Treasury Secretary announced that current tariffs on Chinese goods would stay, pending further talks. Meanwhile, U.S. consumer prices rose slightly by 0.1% in December. The weak information report came on the heels of data last week, showing a moderation in job growth, indicating a sharp slowdown in domestic demand and support for the Federal Reserve's desire to keep interest rates unchanged throughout the year. Money traders will now turn their attention to Europe for the latest economic update. Later tonight, all eyes will be on the British consumer price data and European industrial production data for last November and how they will affect their trading strategy. And that's all from HFC Bank for now. Yunaka. Here are today's exchange rates as set this morning. The Fiji dollar was generally on the descent as markets awaited the U.S.-China phase one trade deal, which didn't come to be today as the U.S. decided to leave tariffs in place at the moment. The Sangamwali rose against the New Zealand dollar but fell slightly against the rest of the currencies we cover. Commodity prices were mixed. Crude oil prices came down to just above $58 a barrel. Gold gained a few dollars to 1547 per ounce and silver closed up at 1777 per ounce.
There are 71 critical bridges in the country which needs to be replaced in the next five to ten years. The Fiji Roads Authority says out of these 71, 40 needs to be replaced within four to five years. Catherine Krishna reports. FRA says most of the bridges were built a long time ago and needs to be replaced. 71 bridges are in focus right now as needing replacement over the next five to ten years. Of those 71, 40 we're saying need to be replaced within the next four to five, six years. We're not saying that anything is in imminent danger of failing. Moa says bridges along the Lautoka to Nandi area will also be replaced with the four-lane upgrade project. Many of the bridges are actually in poor state of repair. So they're the, they're the initial focus to get second bridges in place uh, in, in various locations like Loma Loma, Lenga Lenga, uh, Velo Velo, um, to make sure that we have a, an alternative route to save congestion. Those bridges have a very limited life left in them. They need to be changed now. Meanwhile, Infrastructure Minister Chone Osumate says the government is doing all that they can to improve infrastructure around the country. There's a lot of investment in terms of roads, in terms of bridges. You can see the new bridge that is being built in Tamabua. The height of that bridge is higher than the old bridge because we know that sea levels are rising. There will be more coastal inundation. So as we build these new facilities, they must be built to a standard. The FRA says bridges are being designed in a way which will increase its lifespan. Most of the bridges which will be built is expected to last 100 years. Catherine Krishna, FBC News. That's it from Business Tonight. Jamie joins in now with the latest from sports. Thanks, Corey, and good evening in sports tonight. Silk Tails putting in the hard yards ahead of debut. And Suva Football, a hive of activity in current transfer window. This and more coming up. Bula FM number 2 and Seri. The KVT Silk Tails are making the most of the off-season before their Ron Messi Cup debut. With phase two preparations underway, the side is focused on getting fit and ready to hit the ground running against the Australian clubs. Tali Matera Kula has more. Festive season, high performance trainer Tom Watkins says players are meeting expectations. I've had a pretty tough start to the week this week, but um, it was really pleasing to see that all the boys have obviously been working in the off season um, in that festive time. You know, they didn't get too excited around the Christmas time. Uh, enjoyed their break, but they've come back in good shape, which is which is really pleasing. The side aims to make a good first impression come the competition with most players looking to secure their career in the MRL. Every every team at the start of the comp. Um, has some really high hopes and expectations and uh, nothing different for us. You know, we, we really want to go in the comp and, and make an immediate impact. When the going gets tough, former Fiji Bati prop and squad member Osea Sandrao says quitting is not an option. It's really intense because um, it's, um, it's normally pre uh, off season for NRL boys. So this is the first time all of us are doing the off season. So it's really intense and uh, sometimes you really want to quit but yeah, you just have to push it up if you want to be in the team. The side will continue with their strength and conditioning training until next Friday. The Ron Messi Cup competition kicks off in March. Tali Terkula, FBC Sports. And there's good news for Western Rugby League fans as the Kaibiti Silk Tails will play all their home games in Lautoka. The details were finalized yesterday after Silk Tails Ambassador Petro Rodivni Deva met with Lautoka City Council Chief Executive Chone Nakauvanra, Akula Dama, with this report. The Silk Tails will play 20 games in the Ron Messi Cup competition and 10 of those will be held at Churchill Park. We were very, uh, uh, very appreciative of uh, working with uh, the Latoka City Council uh, and, uh, you know, to be here at uh, Churchill Park, uh, a wonderful uh, sports ground that uh, I think um, for all of us involved with the Silk Tails, uh, 
we can uh, sense the excitement around uh, the opportunity to, to play here and have this as our home ground. Lautoka City Council Chief Executive Tony Nakovandra says the Ron Messi Cup initiative will not only boost the Sugar City's economic activity, but also raise the profile of rugby league in the Western Division. Big boost for the economy of Lautoka and also the exposure of talents of the people in Lautoka. There's a lot of talents in Lautoka, by the young boys, and, uh, but they have not been fully realized. Eh? Mm. See, the Mba Provincial uh, Tribute Institute, it's the champion rugby league team in the, for the secondary schools. It's only based in Lautoka. And we have the Sambeto team that is also the champion, the national champion rugby league. The partnership between the Kaiviti Silk Tales Club and Lautoka City Council is expected to take the sport to new heights in the country. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. Fiji has been drawn in Pool D of the World Rugby Under-20 Championship. In the pool draws released by World Rugby last night, Fiji will meet 2012 winners South Africa, three-time champions England, and hosts Italy in the group stage. Yesterday, the National Under-20 coaching staff announced its 49-member squad to prepare for the World Championship. Fiji plays England in their first pool match on the 28th of June. The girls and boys hurdles events may not be introduced at this year's Coca-Cola Games. Yes, at our last meeting we decided to um, introduce the, um, those two events, the 100 meter hurdles for, uh, for the women and the 110 meters hurdle for the, uh, for the men. But one of the problems that we now have is equipment. Uh, we will have to confirm that during our meeting on the, on the 1st of February because there is another issue that uh, I think it was agreed upon in one of the earlier meetings and that is to have the 1,500 meters for uh, the girls to be run, not in grades, but to be uh, run in all the grades. The Suva football side is expected to be boosted by Nasinu defender Manasa Levadi in the current transfer window. Along with Levadi, former Fiji under-20 rep Ravnit Chand is also expected to join the Whites this season. However, Suva could lose Lysenia Raura, who is looking to move back to Mba, while goalkeeper Simeone Tamanisao is also attracting interest from Rewa. Lambasa striker Sio Tame Kumbu is also in discussions with the side, which already has a new coach in Bubs Khan and technical advisor Martino Nemani. Suba football president Ritesh Pratap confirms their, their interest in Kumbu. Well, we, will be, we are in talks with uh, Sio Tama. Uh, we, we cannot deny the fact that Sio Tama we have been... Uh, uh, having talks with him and uh, we, we haven't come to an agreement yet. Uh, we'll still have to come to a decision where we, we will uh, get Siotama to Suva or no. Former NRL star Phil Bailey says his first order of business as the new Waratahs defense coach will be fine-tuning the side's individual tackle technique. Poor air quality caused by ongoing bushfires forced the player to retire from Australian Open qualification match on Tuesday in Melbourne, Australia. Residents in Melbourne were advised to stay indoors on Tuesday and practice sessions at Melbourne Park were delayed due to the smoky air from the bushfires that have devastated parts of Australia in recent weeks. That's it from Sports Tonight. Angie joins you later on with weather and in new media, digital hoarding. What is it exactly and are you guilty of it? Find out after the break. Umesh Chandra. Our Kanta Chandra, my wife, eh? I'm the radio Fiji to both Sunday Sunta, both a chap program, number one radio. Kumar Sami Naika, Bongo Lugu Latoka, the radio Fiji to me, Purana Gana Lage, I may both a chalage. Kumar, Nakati Merata, radio Fiji to Sunta. Radio Fiji to Deski Darkan. Now you might not hoard physical items, but what about digital ones? In new media tonight, Buzz60 shares the findings from a new study by Western Digital, all about digital hoarding. And here's Angie with the update on the weather. Kia Orana and welcome to the weather world. That tropical depression TD04F is still remains far to the northwest 
and since the last report, it's been moving east-northeast. It's still not developed into a fully-fledged cyclone and meteorologists are keeping a close eye on it. They expect it might turn south in a day or two, which could bring it to this way. Probably, I might bring you more on this tomorrow. Now, moving to the west, cloudy skies with showers indicated for later tonight. Eastwards from Peck Harbour to Suva, partly clear skies for now, but the night will see persistent showers. Look out for that. And up north, gloomy skies with heavy showers in store for the night. At sea, southeast winds 20 to 25 knots, rough seas. For the tides, high tide at 11.17 tonight with low tide at 5.41 a.m. Sunrise will be at 6.42. For tomorrow, we might see some wet spills. You know the drill for a wet day. Tomorrow's temps, Suva will be the coolest at 26 degrees. So, if you're around Suva, ensure to bring some warm wear. And looking ahead to Friday, the best day in a week. But unfortunately, there is rain. But that is what the current forecast states. It might bring change. Let's hope for a bright Friday. That's all the weather news from my end. It's back to you, Amrita. Thanks, Angie. Here's wishing a brighter Friday. In Fijian Pulse, we ask, should the Education Ministry and School Management work harder to eliminate the threat of junk food being sold in school canteens? It's not right. It's not right. I suggest that the, the Ministry of Education and the management of the school to work together plus the health ministry so that the health may see they come into the school and see the type of food that they give you know instead of junks and also those snacks that children love for them to do away with it yes they should work together because most of the time students are getting sick because of junk foods sold in school and parents are not aware of it we better for that we work together to stop the sharing of the junk food in school eh? uh, yes because uh, junk food is not uh, good for health children In the world of the weird and the wonderful, just because a volcano is erupting doesn't mean you have to cancel your wedding. Recapping the main stories, emergency operations centers activated. The Prince of Wales could head here. And real estate uproar continues. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question segment, this week we're asking, has it become more affordable to send children to school? To visit our FBC website to answer. Well, our shot of the day comes from James Chandra, taken in the skies over Viti Levu while taking a flight from Suva to Nandi. You can also send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page FBC News or follow and tweet us those news tips at FBC News or hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. Stay safe. Mademanda. Shamiza and I'm Salma. We're from Nandi and we love Mirchi FM because it's hot. My name is Rajnita Lata and I'm from Vatula Loba. Uh, and we listen to FM because it's hot. Hi, my name is Vinita. I'm from Lambasa. I love li listening to Mirchi FM. It's number one. My name is Sagar Reddy. We are in school, we are in the house, and we are in the house of Mirchi FM. We are in the house of Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM, it's hot.